Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Historic Challenges here on MotoGP20. And as we always do, the first thing to do is to check the Historic Market. So then we've got Danny Pedrosa 2007 for 1,500, we'll buy him. we got the Camel Honda team from 2004, we'll buy that. And then we've got a rare Kenny Roberts Jr. there from 2000. He's 8,900, which still shouldn't really be much out of our pocket. So we've got 36,000 of 100 diamonds left. So once again, we're on the 500s it seems, and we're going to be at Aston this time, and it's going to be wet. So then, we've played as this McDoom, we've played as Arbe, we've played as Schwantz, we've played as Lawson. I feel like playing as Gary McCoy, because obviously we unlocked him a couple of episodes ago, so I'll play as Gary McCoy here. Hopefully, this will be a good challenge. So we're down here on the grid then, looking at John Kaczynski on a pole position. I will put a medium rear on this bike, I don't want to have a soft, I feel like it run out. Mick Dewan then in second position on the grid. We've got to watch out for old Mick, he might, he might be up to his dirty tricks again, he might try and ram us off. Hopefully not, but you never know. And then Wayne Gardner in third place, so those two often pull away at the front together. So I wonder if it will follow the same patterns as the dry weather where those two pull away and then seem to drop back. I do not know. But anyway, let's get this started and let's see if we can get a win here as Gary McCoy. So Kaczynski on pole looking over at Doohan and Gardner's also looking at Doohan. So they both seem to be looking at Doohan here. So we're waiting for the light sky. You can see I've put less fuel in because we can't change the fuel load. Lights and away we go. Off the start, the rear is spinning. The, the front wheel's trying to come up. So we're down to ninth place as we go towards the first corner. We're back past Arbe. Oh, we've almost hit into Crivier there. Massively hot into the first corner. Oh, and we're down. Oh dear. Alright, so hopefully it'll go a little bit better this time. The lights are on. Wait for the lights to go out here at Assen. Lights and away we go. Trying to get a good start here. The, the wheel is spinning. We've probably gone up the gears too early. So we're down to 10th place. We go towards the first corner. Arbe moving back across our line, which is not great. As so we go into the first corner then. Trying to get out the first corner. We're into 12th place. So we're beating somebody. I'm not sure who. We're now beating Biaggi as well. Crivier pretty far down the order compared to Mazzano. Oh, the inside we go. Oh, we've totally lost it into the Crivier there. But luckily, no one's gone down. Gardner, actually not at the front this time. He seems to be struggling a bit further down the order here with Arbe and Rainey. Rainey's looking back at me. So Gardner usually at the front at this point. And I think Kaczynski's actually still leading the race. So we're back up into ninth place. Looking behind us, we can see Biaggi. We can see... I think it's Crivier back there as well, isn't it, that we overtook. Gardner going very slow, it seems. Our base has gone past Gardner, so Gardner struggling in these wet conditions here at Assen. Trying to get on the power. Round the outside of Gardner, up the inside of him now, so up into 8th place. So Gardner, really different races than we usually get. Usually we see Wayne Gardner pulling away at the front and getting reeled in by Doohan. But here it does not seem that that is the case. He's just slipping through the order, bless him. We've gone in a bit wide though, is that going to lie him up the inside? No, it's not, so we've kept the position for now. Oh, here goes Biaggi though. Biaggi on the inside, around the outside of Biaggi, really squeezing him there. Probably a little bit of contact caused by me there, so I do apologise. So we're closing back up on Arbe then, on the other Yamaha, around the outside. I don't think we're going to get that one stopped though. No, nope, so we're going to have to stick behind him for now, but we've still got the run as we go towards the Gert Timmer chicane. He's pushing us to the outside. I'm going to have to go over the chicane a little bit there, because we ran out of room alongside Arbe. Is anyone going to blast past us here? McWilliams is coming. Will he be able to get past us? I don't think so. So currently we're sat in 8th place. We need to stop trying to make a move on. Although, it looks like no one's getting away at the front. And we've gone wide into the first corner again. Really trying to get used to this bike in the wet. I don't think I've ever rode the 500s in the wet. But this is definitely, definitely a nice challenge to have. Here we go then. We're in the slipstream properly of Arbe. Now to the inside of Arbe. Yes, we go past him. So up into 7th. Back behind Rainey again. So we've sort of been sat behind these guys since Strubben on the previous lap, to be honest. We're in the wrong gear there. Didn't want to shift down and lock the rear since I was already losing it. But it seems like we're still closing up on Rainey anyway. Obviously you would expect that since this is a newer Yamaha than what he's on. So we are really closing on him. And it actually does look like the guys ahead are the top five are seem to be getting away from Rainey. So we definitely want to get a move on and get past him. Here we go then. Closing on Rainey so much straight past him like he's standing still. That was one of the easiest moves we've done the entire race. We couldn't pull it off on Arbe there but we managed to pull it off on Rainey. We had so much more speed than him. As we go towards the chicane then we are closing up on the riders ahead quite a bit it seems through the chicane. So 40.4 then for Kaczynski and it's 38.9 for me. So we are way, way faster than everyone at the front of this race here. And it looks like Doohan's looking for a move on Kaczynski. And again, we've gone wide at the first corner. So hard to get it stopped. Closing right to Kenny Roberts Jr. We've hit him. Oh, we've got a bit of damage now. 
because way too much up in the second half there. But he's gone around the outside of Schwantz now, and he's looking around the outside of Doohan. I think Kenny Roberts Jr. has gone for fifth to third. Yes, he has. We're going past Schwantz now as well. Schwantz and Doohan seem like they're in big trouble, and we're going almost three wide into the ball here. We're going on the inside of Doohan. I don't mind squeezing him out a little bit there, since of all the stuff he's done to me. Obviously, we did get retaliation in the previous episode, but squeezing him out didn't feel too bad. So up into fourth place now. It looks like Lawson's looking for the lead on Kaczynski here, and Roberts Jr. is really the man on the move here. Obviously, he's just gone from fifth to third. We're trying to relegate him back to fourth. Looking behind us, they're doing, and Schwantz seems to be slipping back. So we're side by side with Roberts Jr. around the outside. He looked the wrong over the wrong shoulder, but I think he'll probably be able to get back up the inside here. Yes, he will. Massive wheelie there. So we go towards the go to the chicane again. Oh, almost three wide into the chicane. Now Lawson seems to be getting in the way a little bit there. On the inside, almost contact with Kenny Jr. there. As we go over the line, I was in the 140s on that lap, so really held up by them. We're now up into second place, passing Eddie Lawson as we go towards the first corner. We've got a penalty there. We turned in too early. So we've got to take that into consideration now. So John Kaczynski in front of us, still leading the race. He's been leading it since the very, very beginning. He's almost been leading for half the race now. I've done three laps, another one and a half, and he will have been leading for half the race. The rear is sliding so much. Trying to get the power down. Arbe's now overtook Doohan, so it looks like the, the pack is actually closing up a little bit again now that we've all started fighting. Kaczynski's got a little bit of a lead, but hopefully we'll be able to catch him here. There we go, round the outside of Kaczynski for the lead here at Assen. So Gary McCoy hits the front at Assen on the Red Bull WCM Yamaha. Walk towards the line then. 39.4, so we're not quite going as fast as we were before. I guess the damage probably affecting us a little bit. But hopefully we can try and get his head down and pull a bit of a gap. It was a crash. McDoohan's gone down, so McDoohan... His race has gone from bad to worse. He was slipping through the order and now he's crashed. I think he's going to be down into last place after that one. So coming up towards the line then. 38.8, so we are back on the fastest lap pace once again. The brakes of the first corner, 3.6 seconds ahead of Kaczynski in second now. So 38.5 on that lap then, so even faster. And I think it's Arbe now in second behind us. But also got four and a half seconds back to Arbe now. He's past Kaczynski and he's gapped him by quite a bit by the looks of it. Oh, Schwantz is now down as well. So the two riders that were slipping through the order earlier on, Doohan and Schwantz have both crashed now. 137.7, so we're picking up the pace every lap obviously because it is wet track. The conditions are improving. 5.7 seconds in the lead now. Oh, Biaggi's now down as well, so quite a few crashes happening here. 38.3 on that lap then, so slightly slower. But we're starting the final lap now. So hopefully we should have this one in the bag. We've got six and a half second lead, so we just we could cruise home from this point. Well, another crash. Rossi's now down as well. So we go into the Gert Tim chicane then for the final time. Through the chicane. A little bit of a corner cut there on the exits. We come up towards the line, then Gary McCoy is gonna win here in Assen in the 500 cc challenge. So then, interestingly enough, we had 6.7 seconds coming into the last two corners over Arbe, and we ended 5.2 ahead, so... Yeah, that doesn't make much sense. I don't think he would have uh, gained in a sector where they were losing time the whole time. Apparently, Roberts Jr. had the fastest lap as well, and uh, Arbe was half a second faster than my fastest lap, but none of them were actually anywhere near. It's just a simulated times. And look at all these retirements, and Doohan was out, Schwantz was out, Biaggi was out, Rossi was out. Obviously, we saw all those guys go down. Obviously it was wet, so that was probably the cause of it. But Gardner actually managed to get back up into fourth place. Obviously we saw Gardner falling through the pack in the beginning. Obviously the few crashes in front of him and then some overtakes obviously getting back up into fourth. Kaczynski ended up sixth and McWilliams ended up beating Kaczynski. Lawson in seventh. So the two Kajivas were running 1-2 for a while, but in the end it wasn't enough. So on board with doing then. He's just coming into this corner. The rear just comes around and massive high side. That is a classic 500 high side really. So if we slow it down then. He just seems to be getting on the power. I th was he on the power? I don't know. The rear seemed to come around really quickly, so he either got on the power a bit too much, or he just went into the corner too fast, and that just high-sided him, brought the rear around, and that was him out of the race. So on board with Schwantz then. He's coming into this left hand. It gets back on the power. The rear just comes around and snaps and launches him into the air. The bike goes tumbling into the gravel. That's a hefty crash for Kevin Schwantz there. So if we slow it down then you can see it's a very similar crash to doing. He's sliding the rear, the rear just comes the rest of the way around, massive high side. So the wet conditions really catching people out here at Assen and that bike really went tumbling into the gravel. There's no, you know, there's no surprise he retired there. On board with Biaggi now then, it looks like he's going to have the exact same crash as Swanson. Yes he is, exactly the same. And the bike also violently tumbling into the gravel just like with Kevin. We slow it down a little bit then. He's coming into the corner of the rear. Just slides around as he's trying to chase down Wayne Rainey on the other Yamaha. And a 
massive, massive crash there for Max Biaggi. The same crash that befell Kevin Schwantz as well. Right, so we're on board with Rossi now then, and I have no idea what was actually up with him, because look how far down the order and how slow he's going. He goes into this corner, oh, massive high side, so a very, very similar one to doing, really, more than the other guys. So if we slow it down, then he turns into the second valve, the rear starts to step out, the rear continues to step out, gets back on the power, massive high side for Rossi. But I don't know what was actually wrong with him in this race, because if you, uh, well, you probably can't remember back, but we passed him at the first corner, and then he was just gone, like he just drifted off the back of the group. Yeah, see, there was something wrong with Rossi's bike, like he wasn't getting above fourth gear on any of the straights, so... it's obviously something wrong with his bike. So we gained our 15,000 diamonds then, which brings us up to 51,100 diamonds. And then on the market we got... We got another rare thing, we got uh, the 1995 Repsol Honda is rare, so we'll buy that 8,100 diamonds, ouch! Uh, Shinya Nakano 2005, 1,500 diamonds, we'll buy that. And 2,800 for the Honda Cressini from 2002 will buy that, which takes us down to 38,700 diamonds. So if we're looking at the historic market then, now we've only got 10 riders to go, and we've actually got less than 10 teams to go now. We've got 8 teams and 10 riders, so we're really, really getting through it now. There's not much for us to do now. I think that'll probably mean 3 episodes left, because we can get 6 things per episode. That's 18 things left, so I think that's three more episodes of the Historic Challenges, and then we're done. So, yeah, that's come around really, really quickly. I've been really enjoying them as well, so it's a little bit of a shame, but, you know, these things have to come to an end after a while. I can still do some sort of historic content if uh, people want to see that, obviously just doing random races and stuff. I'd like to maybe start doing some random races, some challenges and things like that. Once I've unlocked all the riders, it's a bit easier to do that. I might start doing some last to first challenges. Do let me know what you think of that. Obviously, we do that on quite a regular basis anyway on the uh, these challenges we drop to the back. But I might do a, a challenge I used to do back on MotoGP 8 team, which was the no overtakes on lap 1 challenge. Uh, that, that was always quite a fun challenge because I wasn't allowed to overtake any of the AI on the first lap, which meant you couldn't gain, like, half the grid on the first lap. It, it makes it more interesting, so perhaps I'll start doing that again. But that challenge today was probably one of the easiest ones I've done, probably the easiest since uh, Malaysia on the four stroke or the uh, the very first one at Austin that one uh, it felt kind of like that because I just had the pace over them regardless obviously they beat me on the simulated times but that just seems to be a bit of a bug they can't actually go that fast it, it doesn't make any sense but I hope you did enjoy this video then we will be back with some career mode tomorrow the first round in MotoGP I hope it will be an entertaining race I've not done it yet so I don't know but hopefully it will be entertaining for you to watch so like I said I hope you did enjoy this video I hope you enjoy the resty day Hope you're all staying safe and I shall see you in the next video.